Time now to talk winners and losers on Wall Street. Financial expert Rob Black joining us on this Tuesday. Rob, I'm looking at the markets right now. The Dow is up nearly 500 points. The Nasdaq flirting with 300 points to the good side. What is behind this? What's got Wall Street so excited this morning? Happy days are here again. Essentially, CPI, consumer price inflation, showed a flat reading on a month-to-month -month level and the slowest on a year-over-year -year level in two years. So we're beating inflation maybe a little sooner than we expected. The 10-year Treasury dropped to low 4.5% today, which gives stocks really a lot of ability to work. It's now expected the Fed's going to cut interest rates in the first half of 2020. 24, which will add more fuel to the market rally and make money cheaper and mortgages cheaper, loosening up a little bit of the restrictions out there. Again, this is a lot of ifs and ifs and buts or candy and nuts or what a party would have, but it looks good so far, James. It looks like um, the end of the year rally is here. So uh, for the month, the S&P 500 is up 7.3%. The Nasdaq's up 9.4%. The uh, Dow was up 500 points at one point this morning. The Nasdaq, uh, the S&P 500 flirted with 4,500, which is a great year. So um, it feels like things are starting to to turn for the stock market as far as inflation goes. Interesting. And I see on, on the corporate front, we got Home Depot beating uh, um Earnings expectations, is that good news for Home Depot? Is that going to continue, you think? Yeah, the stocks are big today. The one thing they did say was that they expect the home improvement to the do-it-yourselfers to spend a little less next year than this year. Mm. Um, so they, they kind, of, kind of guided it with a little bit of temperance, which again plays into the slowing inflation. If we're not doing big home projects, we're not uh, spending big dollars and, and jacking up prices of lumber, for instance. So um, it's all coming together, mm -hmm. and uh, there is a slowing and it is a real slowing and we still have to talk about potential recession uh in 2024 because the fourth quarter is going to be pretty weak compared to the third quarter in the u.s and before we move on to the next uh topic we did a story the other day about how more and more millennials aren't yep. seeing the value uh in buying homes but when it comes to those that are buying homes it's kind of interesting the breakdown yeah. of who actually is pulling the trigger talk more about that Women. Um, women are doubling men two times to one. Uh, single women are buying more homes than single men uh, to the tune of 200% more. The average woman who's buying a, a, a home at this point in time, 38 years old. The average male in the United States, 33. It seems like we should have a dating app for uh, single home buyers. I, I, I actually like that. That's a pretty good idea. That's a pretty <laughs> good a idea. idea. That's a great idea. All right. Two, now let's two move roofs, one love. Well, okay. All right, let's move to issue two this morning. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Thanksgiving travel because there's a headline here that says holiday travel expected to be third busiest since AAA's been keeping records, or at least dating back to 2000. Is, it, is that for real? Is it, are we expecting travel to be that high? Yeah, and it's kind of nice. Um, we're back to just below 2019 levels, um, i.e. pre-pandemic. It's the third busiest uh, travel season for Thanksgiving since 2000, like you mentioned. 55.4 million Americans will travel 50 miles or more. It's interesting that 4.7 million will fly. Um, that's up about 6.6% year over year. That's the most since 2005. So we're flying more so than we did pre-pandemic, which is nice to get over that hump, so to speak. Uh, 1.55 million Americans will take cruises or buses or mm -hmm. trains to their destinations. Uh, Thanksgiving cruises, not an idea that's appealing to me to be stuck on a boat, but uh, they <laughs> average about 1500 bucks and they're sold out, James. So airfare is up about 5% in the U.S., wow. uh, so it's a little bit more expensive this year. Okay. Car rentals are down about 20%, but um, are you traveling for Thanksgiving? Cause no, I we're going to stay local. Well, I'll take that back. We're going to drive, but we're only driving up to the Sierra and back. We're not doing a, a long travel. You're traveling. That's yeah, that's true. From yeah, home. so I am part of that. Yeah, part of that demo that's going to be traveling. And then quickly before we run out of uh, time, I was fascinated by this ESPN. I guess getting into sports betting, which is an interesting juxtaposition because that's a Disney company. Now yeah. they're getting into betting. I find that fascinating. It, it, you're right. It is a Disney company. Family morals uh, get pushed aside for corporate profits. So it's going to be called ESPN Bet. If you watched Monday Night Football last night, it was all over the broadcast. It's starting in 17 states, not in California, not legal yet. But it soon will be, I, I get the feeling. FanDuel owns 36% of the market. DraftKings owns 33% of the market. <clears throat> you're going to see content integration 
forever and ever and ever, James. So if you like the purity of sports broadcast, they're gone. They're going to have betting content embedded in them. Sports Center will have updated odds on who's going to win the next game. Mm. Um, <clears throat> ESPN's got 20 million fantasy users who play for free right now. Right. But they're all going to be converted into, uh, you know, a, a, a frenzy, so to speak, yeah. of ad blitzes here and there. Um, interesting note, there's going to be no betting on draft picks. So the NFL and the NBA, they don't want that happening because it obviously could change a kid's future. Um, and there's a lot of inside information about who's going to take the number one pick. Oh, right. Uh, kind of thing. So well, that's fascinating. Um, All right. Yeah, um, it's, it's fun. It is fun. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that works going forward, trying to get ESPN with another revenue stream there. Rob, thank you as always. We're going to talk with Rob again tomorrow. So make sure you let him know now what you want him to chat about. Facebook, Twitter, you got his handles. You've also got his email, rob at robblack.com.